Max! Are you even playing? You're so free right now! Okay. <laughs> You're like the candy dude steals from babies! Yeah, keep talking. Oh yeah! I'll take a margarita, Victor. Make it on the rocks. Doom, your saltiness is making me thirsty! This isn't a margarita. Get here. Hitchhiking, train hopping, really awkwardly painful teleports. Nothing worked out after Jill left me. Even my rap career is in shambles. What do you want with us? Well, I find myself in a very difficult situation. I have no place to stay, and you're the only friends I have. Friends? What the? F I know. You can help us with Nemesis. One of the greatest gaming villains makes its way into Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Nemesis is one of the largest characters in the game next to Sentinel, but has an odd mixture of playstyles. Moving around with Nemesis proves to be challenging due to his large size, but he's given the necessary tools to make him viable as a fighter. His overall movement on the ground is very weak, considering he has one of the slowest walk speeds in the game. However, his wave dash is actually not that bad and can be used to move rather quickly. Nemesis is probably best described as a mixture of Ghost Rider and the Hulk, with multiple super armor moves and long stretching tentacle normals that allow him to control space. He also has some of the highest damage output of any character, projectiles, and extremely tricky command grabs that can be used to reset opponents. One of the toughest things to learn about Nemesis is which moves can be freely used, as a lot of them come out very slow and can be unsafe. The Deadly Reach releases a tentacle from Nemesis' wrist that covers about half screen. This special can be performed on the ground with two separate versions in the air. The Deadly Reach is Nemesis' main basis for control. These moves can be special cancelled out of or hyper cancelled as well. The jumping angle to Deadly Reach is especially effective against small characters and others that are trying to play keep away. Once that Deadly Reach hits the opponent, you can cancel it into his launcher or the clothesline rocket. The clothesline rocket specials are useful for extending combos, but have no invincibility and come out very slow. The light one slams the opponent into a wall bounce, medium does the same with a horizontal rocket follow-up, and heavy does a similar motion with an angled rocket. The light one has the best application in the middle of combos as it's very easy to follow up. The rocket launcher is Nemesis only projectile. The medium one goes straight across the screen but will easily miss on smaller characters. The jumping one angles down, and there's another that's angled upwards. Each one of these rockets does 150,000 damage on hit, but are very unsafe. The best application is to shortly jump up and do an air rocket which angles down and can also hit off the ground. The rocket slam has Nemesis swinging his rocket launcher in several different directions and has hyper armor. The light one will throw your opponent upward, medium a ground bounce, and heavy a wall bounce. 
The medium and heavy hit extremely hard and are great for extending combos, but I find the light one to be the most interesting. Since it launches into the air, it offers a great mix-up opportunity to use his Tentacle Slam command grab. The light Tentacle Slam grabs on the ground with small range. The medium has a bit more extended range but grabs up and in front of Nemesis, and the heavy grab angles right above his head. Connecting with any of these command grabs will result in a ground bounce and an easy free combo. But as I was saying before, end your combo with a light launcher slam, then let your opponent air recover right into the medium tentacle slam. For most of the cast, this means death by monster. Nemesis 3 hypers are the bioweapon assault, the biohazard rush, and the fatal mutation level 3 grab. Bioweapon Assault shoots several full-screen rockets and ends with a gigantic slam. It has no invincibility, but hits off the ground, and is his best hyper to place at the end of combo strings for maximized damage. The Biohazard Rush is one of the more interesting supers in the game. It's a multi-hit rushing super that hits multiple times and ends with a huge explosion. It does a ton of damage but can be difficult to put into combos, however, this is one of the only hypers in the game with full super armor. Nemesis will still take damage while rushing, but he'll plow through absolutely anything except command grabs. The Fatal Mutation is a command grab and does 450,000 points of damage, and can also be followed up with the Bioweapon Assault. The range is fairly decent on this grab, but you can actually extend it even more. Cancel it out of a move like Crouching Fierce, and you'll see what I mean. Nemesis' three assists to choose from are the Clothesline Rocket, the Launcher Slam, and the Rocket Launcher. The Clothesline Rocket comes out fairly fast and causes a useful wall bounce. The Launcher Slam has a single hit of Hyper Armor and causes a ground bounce, and the Rocket Launcher is a full screen projectile. The Launcher Slam is my assist of choice because of its Hyper Armor, its ability to extend combos, and it comes out rather quickly. Nemesis can execute some of the most damaging solo combos in the game due to his huge size and strength. Even some of Nemesis' most basic combos can do nearly 600 to 700,000 points of damage. Integrating the Clothesline Rocket and the Launcher Slam allows for Nemesis to maximize the damage of his combos. You know, Nemesis is an excellent addition to any team. If you are, say, looking to replace your assist character, I would pick him. That's it! Agent Smith here needs to jack back into the Matrix! I want him gone! Doom, what are you talking about? He's trying to help us out. Stopping such a child. You know, there's one downside to using Nemesis, and that is that he's difficult to control. Stars. Wesker? That's just cruel! And you don't pay rent. What's your point? Nemesis, stop smacking me with those slathering fun noodles of yours. I just got this damn suit dry clean. I want tacos. God damn it! Give me that! This is what happens, Nemesis, when you damage my $500 sunglasses. They're Italian! <laughs> Wow, and you Mr. Caboose! You're a real winner, Wesker! Uh, Wesker, what?! Beating the hell out of Nemesis isn't gonna solve anything. I don't know what you're talking about, that's how I've raised him. It turned out just fine. Oh, okay. I think I've got the perfect person that can help us out. Another doctor joins the cast, and he has a PhD in trickery. I left my Sanctum Santorum for this? Doctor Strange is an extremely large and slow moving character, but has select specials and tools that can make him very dangerous. His walk speed is decent, and can normal cancel his dashes, but Doctor Strange won't be doing much rushing on the ground. These tools include quick teleports, far-reaching normals, moves that cause crumple states, physical counters, 
and multiple projectiles. When it comes to setting traps and controlling space, Doctor Strange is the man for you. Illusion is Doctor Strange's physical counter. It only works against high or mid physical attacks and crosses the opponent over on the ground. Illusion is also the only way for Doctor Strange to teleport behind a character in the corner. The Impact Palm is one of Doctor Strange's best moves. On hit, it acts as a crumple state on the ground and causes a large amount of hit stun in the air. This move is great for extending combos, punishing the opponent, and juggling. The Daggers of Danak are Doctor Strange's go to projectiles. The Light Attack summons one ring that homes on the opponent and comes out very fast. While the Medium summons three discs, it comes out slower but does more damage. Because of their tracking properties, it can be very hard to get around these moves because they all can be done in the air. The Eye of Agamotto summons a large fireball orb that hits multiple times but doesn't move. But if you hit the Eye of Agamotto with an impact palm, it will travel full screen. But depending on how long it travels, the damage and hit stun will decay. The Mystic Sword is a special with a few variations. The Light One is a multi-hit physical attack that hits all around Doctor Strange, as this move is excellent for an anti-air. The Medium Mystic Sword is a single projectile that travels horizontally across the screen, and the Heavy travels upward at an angle. Both of these moves have a ton of projectile durability. The Grace of Hoggoth sets multiple glyphs that can be used to set traps. The Light One summons a yellow glyph, the Medium a red glyph, and the Fierce One shoots a fireball that will track the glyphs on the screen. You can set up three of these glyphs at any given time. As the fireball travels across several of the yellow glyphs, it causes new attributes to the move, which include increased fireball durability, speed, and effect on the opponent. Going across one yellow glyph will cause more damage and hit stun, two makes it much faster and will cause even more hit stun, and three turns into a beam that causes a crumple state. The red glyphs don't increase the projectile's attributes at all, but they cause explosions. The more red glyphs the fireball connects with, the bigger the explosion becomes and it can hit off the ground. They're also excellent for redirecting the fireball and setting up traps with multiple glyphs. Teleporting behind these fireballs can be very tricky because they all track the opponent. Doctor Strange also has a general flight command. It's best used for mixing up block strings and can also be executed in the air to get away. But if you're looking to mix up your opponent, then the teleports are what you should be using. The light teleport tracks the opponent and appears in front, the medium directly behind, and the heavy appears right above. The light and medium teleports only track characters on the ground, but the heavy will track the opponent everywhere, including the air. The bolts of Balsak is a double hitting beam projectile. If it connects, the first hit causes an incredible amount of hit stun, and the second one will knock back. This is a powerful move, but it comes out slow with low durability, and most characters can duck right under it. Doctor Strange's three hypers are the Spell of Ashanti, the Seven Rings of Ragador, and his level three Astral Magic. The Spell of Ashanti is an auto-tracking, extremely quick pillar projectile. Multiple button presses during this hyper will double the hits and increase the damage greatly. It can also be performed in the air, and it hits off the ground. Considering the amount of scenarios this hyper applies itself to, it can be considered one of the best level ones in the game. The Seven Rings of Ragador is a projectile counter hyper. Activating this hyper right before you're hit by a projectile will activate a large beam that will counter and hit the opponent. Having this counter hyper makes Doctor Strange extremely scary because he can counter projectile hypers, regular projectiles, and can stop most characters zoning. And with multiple button presses, you can increase the damage and double the hits. Most counters can be difficult to integrate into your game plan, but this hyper is very useful. Astral Magic is Doctor Strange's level 3 and travels about 3 fourths of the screen acting as a projectile. Doing 450,000 points of damage, this level 3 is the best follow up for a completed air combo, then hit a character off the ground with a Grace of Hoggoth Beam or an off the ground assist. And if you're fast enough, you can actually follow up the level 3 with a spell of Vishanti for bonus damage. Doctor Strange's first assist is the Medium Daggers of Danak. The three discs are delayed and will track the opponent anywhere on the screen, but if Doctor Strange gets touched at any point, the discs will disappear. 
The eye of Agamotto holds its place on the screen and does about 10 hits. This assist is great for lockdown, as it will hold your opponent in position for a period of time. This one is actually my preferred assist for Doctor Strange. Bolts of Balthak is the third assist and has the same attributes as the regular move. The only issue is that this assist comes out very high and can be ducked easily by most characters. Comboing with Doctor Strange has a wide variety and can be very easy, but some of his more lengthy setups can do extremely high damage. Here's a simple bread and butter using a Grace of Hoggoth to act as an off the ground to relaunch. And here's a corner relaunch combo that utilizes Astral Magic and Spell of Vishanti. I am the Sorcerer Supreme, after all. I've been clean for weeks. Nasty habit, really. And gods, uh, uh, I don't need any samples anymore. Yeah, dude. Good for you. Yeah, dude. Good for you. Because I'd hate it if you were secretly just a part of Galactus. Do the nemesis complete and eradicate the online warriors? Otherwise, no deal. Okay, look. Here's the thing about Galactus. Nope. Whoa, you're getting way too good at that. Yeah, Doom's been practicing in the mirror. For this? Yeah, I just want to look good. Hey, get, get me out of here, you wretched degenerates! I just got it. What? What am I wearing? He's not the threads of a god. I feel like I'm back in the mid '90s. What do you want? Stars. <laughs> oh, you see, the thing about stars is... No! No! Damn it! 